Hi, I'm here with my son Hattie and we're going to share with you a little story about a challenge that Hattie had at school and hopefully it'll help you learn how you can uh, increase emotional intelligence and become more self-aware and manage your stress. Hattie, take it away. One day, I had an issue at school and it really upset me. When my dad and I talked about it, he told me to think about why was I angry and what was the reason. He told me to think about what was I feeling at the time and what happened after. I told him that sometimes my inner critic talks too much and well, he laughed a bit. And then he told me that I needed to listen to the inner critic and learn when to shut him up so that I don't have to worry all the time. Yeah. Thank you very much, Hattie. Inner critic? This guy is starting to sound a lot like me. Maybe that's a good thing. In fact, as parents, as educators, as leaders in our places of work in our community, when we start sharing the message with those closest to us, we can help them continuously grow, improve, and become better versions of themselves. When Hattie shared with me about a challenge that he had at school and that he was facing, we talked about it and how he can make it better. And yes, he did use the expression inner critic. You see, it's this inner voice that can help us determine our perspectives and if we develop a positive and optimistic mindset or a negative and pessimistic one. How well we do that can determine how we deal with setbacks in our life or with everyday situations altogether. Our inner critic can throw us off course and not only can it affect our day, it can turn into a habit and impact our life stance completely. But if we can learn to manage it, if we can start dealing with our challenges and adversity constructively, that can help us become better and more effective people in general. Research shows that people who are optimistic handle adversity and change more effectively than those who are pessimistic. It sounds pretty easy, but it's not. It can be challenging to learn to do this consistently, and we have to get into the habit of mastering it so that it becomes as easy as one, two, three, or ABC. Actually, according to Dr. Martin Seligman, the ABC technique, which stands for adversity, beliefs, and consequences, can help us become more optimistic. In short, when we first encounter adversity, we form a belief that influences what we do next, so they become consequences. For example, your teacher or your supervisor or a colleague gives you some negative feedback about a presentation. This is the activating event or the adversity. If you're pessimistic, you might take it personally and conclude that you're just no good at giving presentations. This is a belief. Consequently, you start avoiding giving presentations altogether. You become less involved and you pull out. Next, you can see how this snowballs and pretty soon, you don't get involved at all. The key point is what happens between A and B. When you encounter adversity, how you explain it to yourself has a direct impact on your mindset and your relationships. If your inner critic starts chatting incessantly, what Dr. Seligman calls our explanatory style, introducing all sorts of possible outcomes filled with worry and fear, it could turn you into a pessimistic person really, really fast. But we can take steps to develop a more positive mindset, controlling our explanatory style. First, when you encounter the activating event or the adversity, pause. Instead of reacting impulsively, pay attention to your inner dialogue and write down your thoughts. Give yourself a chance to reflect upon the event. If you can respond rationally, it can produce healthier emotions and less stress. Next, describe what happened. What are the beliefs that you had during and after the adverse experience and the consequences of this? After you've noted down several situations, look at what you've written. Do you see any patterns? Can you identify the consequences of negative thinking? When this becomes a habit, we can start managing our negative ABC patterns more effectively. In fact, it can become as easy as one, two, three. Another technique that we can use is to change our physical state in order to change our mental and emotional state. Like if you're sitting, try standing. If you're standing, try sitting. If you need to, go for a walk. By creating these distractions when you're confronted with adversity, it can help you become more focused on something else and start behaving differently when you have these negative thoughts. Try, for example, 
pinching yourself or wear a rubber band around your wrist that you can snap whenever you're experiencing stressful situations. This thing will remind you to step out of your negative cycle of thinking. When you reflect on what you've written down, you can start challenging your negative beliefs by intentionally looking for the positive in your situation. Ask yourself, what did I learn? What could I have done better? When you're more intentional and aware, you can start changing your perspective, managing your inner critic, and developing a positive mindset. And that can help you develop into a better version of yourself every day going forward.